Howdy, we are the Barn Brothers, and welcome to the 1977 Honda CT90 Project Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1, go check it out now. In Part 1, we worked on getting the engine unseized. Now we're jumping back in to try to get all these crusty parts cleaned up and getting this bad boy running. I'm just going to clamp the cylinder down here so that we can use our hone to clean up the cylinder and hopefully be able to reuse it. This is technically a brake cylinder hone. Uh, the cylinder is so small that most of the other auto body hones won't fit in it. You can just use a drill Grab your hone, put it on, I'm going to clean some of the dirt and stuff out of the piston first so I don't scratch it up any more than it already is. One half of the cylinder looks pretty good because this piston was sitting below that point. So everything that was behind the piston looks good and everything that was sitting out with water and old gas is a little bit crusty. So we'll see if we can't fix this up. Going to get a little shot for a before and after. I'm going to go nice and light at first. You just want to work it forward and back. Here's a look at the cylinder after honing it. Certainly much better. You can tell how the bike was oriented. You can see a water line and where most of the corrosion is on the cylinder there. You can see that. Um, it's still pretty smooth. I think we're probably just gonna send it. Since the rings were stuck on this piston, we decided to find an even crustier piston to try to get the rings free. Ideally, we would be replacing this piston. However, we didn't buy one, so we're gonna try to <laughs> reuse the one that we already have and just put some new rings on it. Trying to work these piston rings free so we can reuse this mint condition piston. Uh, we've been heating it, spraying it with PE blaster, inhaling the fumes. Thirty minutes later, and we are still trying to get the rings free. There you have it. Got all the crusty rings off this piston. Now we're gonna clean it up a bit, see if we can't put some new rings on it and we'll be good to go. We're using a little gas to help clean up this piston. So right now I'm going to put these new rings in the piston that we were able to salvage. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and put those in and then start assembling the top end and we'll see what happens from there. Are you feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky. Here's the rest of the bike. Looks a lot worse than we started. So on the bottom ring, here's a little picture of what it looks like. Ooh. There's a, a lip on the inside edge of this. So you want to put this corrugated portion in first. Then you can put your small rings on the outside. That's the top one. And then the bottom one. Sometimes these, the rings on the bottom come together in one solid piece. Uh, this kit that we got, they were in three separate pieces and then we have our other two rings for the top and bottom. And I always forget which one. So the shinier one goes on the top. You just want to get a little piece of it in and then you can slowly work it around until it's all the way in. And then the last one, the middle one, get that in there and voila and hopefully a few little taps nope tighten this down a little bit more Well, that's really seized on there. Here goes nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's how you do it. Perfect. <laughs> you want to always use the right tools. Don't worry, the vice grips won't damage the soft aluminum head. <laughs> Ta-da! Great success! <laughs> All right, in order to get these valves off, we have to take off this side cover here. I'm guessing, oh. Ooh. It's always a treat when uh, things break free without, wow, without having to hammer them or heating them. Wow, all three. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay. Love tap. Sometimes the gaskets get a little, a little stuck. Hang out there. Oh. Looks pretty decent. Gasket looks okay. Spark plug is still usable. <laughs> There's nothing down in there. It'll probably work. You can just put something down there as long as it's not seized and get this out and get the other one out. They're actually pretty good. They came out pretty easy. Now, I can get these rocker arms out. It's always nice to have little containers around your garage so you can toss your nuts and bolts in them. 
Come on. Okay, number two. Next is the fun part. <clears throat> if you've never taken these springs off before, um, good luck, they're a lot of fun. They're pretty tight. You can get them off with a, a wrench and a little bit of leverage, but we made this valve spring tool here just out of a piece of similar diameter tubing to the washer that's on the top here. So what you're gonna do is get a nice clamp that you can tighten down and put, I left the plastic guards on so it won't mess up or scratch anything below. So you're gonna put that there, put the little tool there, and then lower it all the way till it's in place. And then you can tighten this down. I don't know if you guys have a good view, but you can see it pushed the your washer down. Magnet. And then you can use some tweezers to grab these out. We used to call them like valve spring pins, but technically they are cotter valves and they help lock the uh, the valve in place and just want to get this other one out and once those two pieces are out you can loosen this back up get your part out of the way and the two springs and the washer as well as another washer from the bottom will all fall out and based on the condition of the front here you probably cannot push this out so we're gonna have to soak it in a little bit of penetrating oil for now we'll jump back to the other side and get this one taken off as well For the longest time we were trying to get these out just using a wrench and it does work but it's a pain in the ass and these little cotter valves like to fly into the land of no return. So as you can see the intake and exhaust valves are pretty stuck on here. We are probably going to try to do a little bit of light tapping from this side and over here to try to push them back out. Um, and we'll see how that goes. You can use a nice bolt like this. move yeah we got some movement that's nice all right here's our nice what do you think can we reuse it nice crusty intake valve not too shabby what do you guys think should we reuse it or buy a new one we'll figure that out later so hopefully the exhaust valve comes out just as easily and it does here's the exhaust valve an equal amount of crustiness on there and next we'll be cleaning up the head and cleaning up the valves seeing if we can reuse them and then we're going to have to relap the valve surfaces here on the head. Time to see if we can get these two valves cleaned up with the wire wheel. Let's see if we can make it happen. Of course, we're wearing full PPE, eye protection. 
You might be thinking to yourself, why are you wasting your time on these trusty valves when you could just buy new ones? Well, that's a great observation, but what's the fun in that? Anyone can buy new valves. Go on, see if we can get it running with the existing parts that we have. Do you like to keep the original? There's a little bit of pity in the, on the inside of this valve, but I think we're going to send it. The top is looking a lot better. Time to see if we can clean up the top end with a little wire wheel, hopefully without damaging the surface too much. I also like to try to use a small Dremel tool with a wire wheel on it. It's great for getting in there and grinding some of this crud off. As long as you're not pressing too hard, you're not gonna damage the aluminum any more than it already is. There is some uh, crusty stuff in here that you'll probably need to use a little pick like this to get out. You just wanna be careful not to scratch up the surface too much. Which should I use to grind the valves? This or this? Anyways, this is a little technique we came up with a little while back. We'll get a little bit of PB blaster. We don't want to wear down the valve guide. So we use some oil. Kind of work it back and forth in there. It should move pretty freely. You shouldn't be getting stuck. And then we have this little drill attachment and you can attach it right there first i'm going to put a little dab of valve grinding compound oh and the bottle is pressurized so it's squirting it all over the place it doesn't really matter where you put it on here it's gonna spread it around evenly anyways i'm gonna spin it around by hand first and then going to attach my little tube down here at the bottom and then I can let her rip. spin it slowly one direction I'm gonna give this a whirl we do actually have new valves that we can use but I want to see if we can uh, relap these So now I'm going to put the top end back together and got the valve in there, got the valve seal back in there. What? Keep it a little lower. Now I'm going to put the springs in, first the small one. Uh, it doesn't matter which way the large one goes, then the washer, whatever you want to call this. Then next, you need to get these two cotter pins right in there. And just like we did when we took it out, we're going to use our t this little spring tool here. And this method makes it really easy because I can just compress it down just like that and then I can take my tweezers drop that in there drop that in there and then uh oh I just dropped one of the pins into the best 
onto the floor. Aha! Victory! That's why you don't drop these on the ground, because they're very hard to find. We'll see if I can put this in without losing it again. So, you want to push this down. You can see when these cotter valves drop down in place. And then you just loosen this back up. And voila! You can see it locked in there nice. Valve is where it's supposed to be. And we can do the other side. Okay, it looks like they're in the right place. Pull it up slowly. And we're in business. Now I got the intake and the exhaust valves and all the springs put back in so I can put in the rocker arms they are <clears throat> the same as you can see here no difference in shape or size or part numbers they're both 21 so you can put one in here and then before you put the holder piece of steel tubing. Okay, so those are in place. So it doesn't matter which one goes where. And then you just push them in. There's a stop point towards the back here, so you can only push them in so far. This one goes in the same way. Now that we got the top end and the cylinder cleaned up, it's time to start assembling the bike back together. That's in. Now it's time for our cylinder. Looks good as new. Got it oiled up. So as you can see, it lines up nice. And there's the little hole here for the oil hole on the case there. Slide that down without ripping it. We already cleaned up the surfaces. We may have to ow, have to pinch your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so got this. It's all lined up. I'm gonna slide this down, and then it, sometimes it takes a little bit of pinching and poking in order to get everything where it's supposed to be. You can usually kind of poke the rings, compress them a little bit with your fingers, and then slowly work it on, giving some uh, gentle pressure, maybe a few you love taps. There we go. So now the the piston is inside the cylinder and then you want to make sure you don't crush your cam chain so pull that out here and then you can push the cylinder down the rest of the way you need just a little bit of bit of coaxing there we go all right now that we got these surfaces made it up the whole thing will tighten up once we tighten the top end down so next we're going to get our 
new head gasket, which will sit right here and then be mated up with this surface right here. And we're gonna put the rest of this together. We're going to put the top end with our head gasket. Uh, I'm going to put a couple dabs of oil on this because I want it to kind of stick to the to the head right in place. It's not the perfect size for the diameter of the circle there, but I want it to be right by the inside of the circle without moving. So hopefully that little bit of oil will help it stick. Uh, we're gonna have to turn the whole bike in order to get this to slide on here because there's not enough room. So stand by while we do that. Capturing our cam chain again. Okay, we're there. I like to try to tighten the top end bolts down first before I put the camshaft in. I'm just gonna put something there to hold it so that my chain doesn't drop back into the engine, which would be a huge pain in the butt. Where did we put this? This has already got a decent gasket on it and it really doesn't matter that much. So I'm not gonna worry about scraping this off and putting this new one on. We're just gonna line it up, drop it on there. And then we got all of our nuts and washers over here. I'm smoking crack. We have to put this in first. I really hope it fits in here. Well, that's what was wrong. <laughs> the other bike that I just took apart, this will still fit through this hole, but on this one, it does not. So, we get to undo this again. All right, so, we took the top end off and got our cam sprocket back in. Uh, when the little marker here is on T, the little zero on the cam sprocket should match up with a mark that's not on our thing. Oh, there's a little mark. It's right here. Just kidding. So the little mark on our sprocket should match up here. It doesn't, so I'm gonna walk this all the way around. All right, so when the holes are lined up, you can see the little, may not be able to see it right there, you got a little zero. And then you got a little tick there. That should be lined up just as the tick on here lines up with the T. And this should just slide right in. You may have to do a little wiggling. These two little doodads. So the other good news is the two holes here will only line up one way with the sprocket. Uh, they line up correctly how they are right now. So I can attach these two bolts. Screws, nails, they're all the same. You can use them interchangeably. As you can see, Luke is nailing down the cam. <laughs> We're gonna spin it the correct direction. 
So now we're gonna put the rest of, of the pieces on over here. We got our gasket. We're gonna line it up on here. Gonna get this on there. Line up the holes. And then we got our screws all ready to go. And no Phillips screwdriver anywhere near me. Gonna get these all tightened down. Is anything filming? This one. <laughs> A lot of times we've said that. As you can tell, we are really good at YouTube. While he's working on unseizing the timing in advance, I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and run it in between these two points to clean them up. If they're not clean, you won't get spark. Here's the timing advance. It is completely seized up. So we gotta get that free. Basically everything on the bike was seized. All right, we got our timing advance. <clears throat> this little notch here lines up with the notch there. So you can just put this on, spin it around till it locks in place. And then when you turn this, the little arms of the timing advance will move out. You're on. All right, so we're gonna put the points plate back on. There's a little notch here and a little notch here on the points plate. Those should line up. That's where you always want to start. Okay, and then you're going to go to the inside threaded hole here. Maybe if my chubby fingers don't mess it up. That, and then this notches in right there and then this wire connects to well the only other wire that needs a home home so we're gonna hook that up there if it'll let me okay um we're going to leave this off for right now until we uh, basically get it to turn over and fire. Next step is to grab a battery, hook up the battery, and, the and find a spark plug boot. Thanks for watching part two. Watch part three to see if we can get this bad boy running.